Hello, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today we have some beautiful background noise. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it on the microphone, but I'm going to mention it for those of you who are listening. It is slightly raining and I'm sitting on the covered deck in the back and so the gutters are allowing that rain to trickle off the roof through the metal tubing, that aluminum tubing of the gutters and out onto the low patio below and so you might hear some of that. I hope that you can hear some of the birds who are enjoying the rain this morning. It's a little bit humid, which I love, love, love so much. So there you are. That is our setting for Sunday morning coffee. I have my warm mug of coffee. I'm going to have a sip of that. My husband made these really cute mugs in his um, online store, and it's called the mug that he made. He made it for me, thinking of me. And it says emotional support human on it. It's so cute. I'll have to take a picture and post it on Instagram. Emotional support human. And you can buy one too <laughs> if you want one. <laughs> I'll have to showcase it. He was um, using that term for the last year or two because of um, our dog Toby. And if you watch me on Bridget Inspired on Instagram, you know who Toby is. Toby Jeff, our dog, who loves to go on walks. And I'm very clearly his emotional support human. So... But it has many con many different um, connotations and it could apply in many situations. A teacher needs this, right? Emotional support human. <laughs> mm. Nice coffee this morning. Let's get into our topic today. We're going to talk about being in your body. Yes, for those of you who are on a spiritual journey, who are opening up to your intuition, who love all things spirituality, want to learn about energy and like to have psychic readings and just are super interested in open and curious. And for those of you who've been on the path for quite some time, you and I both know this is a problem. Oh yes, and I'm gonna call it like it is, a problemo. It is a problem. Being in your body. Being in your body gets to be a challenge because when you discover that you have this beautiful spirit and you discover the world of energy and you feel so incredibly free when you are connected to your spirit fully and for many that first initial maybe even five years on the intuitive path or the spiritual awakening path oh it's timeline it doesn't really matter it's different for everyone but earlier on it feels like so great when you're doing meditations or guided image, imagery visualizations that help you to leave your body and go to a beautiful place or leave your body and experience the universe, that kind of a thing. Some people would call this maybe even like remote viewing or astral traveling or astral projection kind of things. It's called a lot of stuff, okay? All resulting in the same thing. You're leaving your body. You're literally walking out the house and leaving the body. Now, the important thing to note is that you can do these things and have these experiences very safely while still connected to your body. And I know you're probably, some of you are probably like, what is Bridget talking about? Because some of you are like, I don't get this at all. I am so not that person. I don't meditate. I don't even get into I don't understand this intuition stuff. I'm just here because it's interesting. <laughs> so people who are unconscious too and not aware of spirit leave their bodies also. This happens in times of trauma or tragedy where the body and the spirit are very separate, separated. This happens when you have anxiety. This happens when you're experiencing high stress. This happens when you're depressed. It's hard to live in your human body because it feels like very heavy energetically. It feels confined. It feels like it's an anchor and it's stuck. And when you're feeling stuck, we can sometimes blame our bodies. We use our bodies as a scapegoat. Like, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like how fast it ages. I don't like this, that, and the other thing. And we are mean to each other's bodies too, like bullying each other based on physical appearances or lack of what this is or that is or all that. 
I mean, just look at social media. Hello, look at all the filtering and all this stuff that's going on because we're just not good enough. Our bodies are just not good enough. Because of this, there has been a constant re-awareness of separation between the body and the spirit. And you've heard this. You've heard this, you guys. You know what I'm talking about. The spirit. Are you a spiritual being having a human experience? Or are you a human being having a spiritual experience? The truth is, you had best to be both, right? Um, Yes. This is not about divisiveness or separation. (laughs) This is not a competition between the spirit and the human. But clearly it becomes that way. The mind will step in even, even the mind, the mind and the body connected to the human expression most often and the heart and the soul most often alliance aligned with the spiritual more so, okay? When you're thinking of basics and whose team are you on kind of thing. The mind even, the mind even tries to control things and, and manage things in ways that are not so nice to the body. The mind is even mean to the body, for goodness sakes. And it certainly discounts the spiritual stuff. Stuff, energy, oh, you know, all that intangible stuff that, you know, people are ignoring, but really has an amazing resourcefulness that if we can harness that energy like, oh, solar power, we could actually have some clean living. This is not about separation, although the mind does encourage the separation because the mind is all about survival and the essence of the mind, it wants you to just be safe. The less the body is active, the more it's safe to the mind. For example, you get in a car and you drive down the street or you go on a road trip in a car. Oh my gosh, better yet, the mind is freaking out because you're on a road trip and there's so many unknowns and what could happen? oh my gosh, what if you break down on the side of the road and that's not a good Samaritan that helps you? Or what if you get in a crash and, you know, you lose the, you lose your, your leg or, you know, I mean, there's so many things or you, or you, or God forbid, heaven forbid, universe forbid, you, you injure somebody else and then you have this horrible, incredible guilt and depression and then you end up just leaving life altogether yourself anyway. Like, see what I'm saying? The mind is like, dun, 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 worst case scenario. But it works, doesn't it? Doesn't it work? It works to try to keep control over your body and your physical environment and to shut down the spirit. But this isn't intended as an ego or mind is bad. Not at all. Not at all. But let's be aware that that's part of why you're not in your body because your mind is kind of a jerko. It's a jerkorama sometimes. The brain is not very nice. It just isn't. But here's the thing. Being in your body is essential. So how it is essential. And you're like, why, Bridget? Why? Because when you're gone, it's like a free-for-all in your body. Who's tending to the house? Who's caring for the energy in your house? If you're worried about being all spiritual and entities and energy attachments and bad energy and negative energy, if you're leaving the house, it's empty. Burglars are going to come by. The kids are going to have a party. It's going to be messy. I mean, seriously, think about it. Come on, people. Use your brain (laughs) in a good way, right? Oh, I don't want to scare you. I don't mean because you astral travel, all of a sudden you're going to get some big dark entity, entity attachment. Dun, dun, dun. You guys, let me just tell you this. Let me just give you spiritual information here. The reality is you got more to worry about with your own fears, resistance, old patterns and crappy stories you're telling yourself than you do with some oogie boogie energy attached to you. Seriously. Now I know there are legitimate attachments and legitimate reasons why you feel so down and heavy and um, actual paranormal stuff that can happen to people. Yes, but you guys, that's like not even 5% of the cases that I see where people feel like they have this big energy attachment or they're being drugged down by other people's energies. I'm like, wake up, wake up everybody, wake up, coffee time, take a drink, drink a coffee. 
wake up people that's empath that's called you are manifesting through your own energy and your crappy feelings and you're not dealing with your crappy feelings and so that's why you feel like you have a backpack of an oogie boogie and you might have an backpack of an attachment but guess why it's there probably because you've been leaving your body because you feel so crappy but you don't want to feel crappy and you don't want to address the patterns that are causing you to feel crappy And because of that, you got attachments or you got heavy energy. And so you don't want to be in your body. It's like your house is messy, so you don't want to be there. (laughs) I'm just going to move out of my house now. I've invested all this time and money, 15 years in my house. And instead of selling it and getting our equity back, you know, worth like getting, you know, good money for a new home or what, we're just, and you know, whatever, we're just going to leave it. We're just going to walk away from it. Yeah, we're just not going to, we're going to stop taking care of it. We're not going to shut the doors or the windows. We're going to leave everything open, let the animals move in. We're going to sleep in there, but we're not going to take care of it. I mean, come on, it doesn't make sense. I'm a little up in arms a bit about this scenario about leaving the body because the body is so abused physically emotionally energetically clearly and it's not because the body is vulnerable it's because we abandon it we abandon it so i hope that during the first half of this conversation i have eliminated some of your excuses as to why it's so much better to be a spirit bridget i just hate being in a body i'm like well then address the human life stuff work with the work with your spiritual stuff to help you that's what spirituality is about you guys it's about resourcing the intangible to support your tangible The goal is the physical manifestation, not leaving this planet, not hurrying up and getting done with this life so you can get on to the next one. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're going to repeat that grade. We're going to bring you back. You're going to start over. Do you really want to start over? No. Do you really want to abandon your house? Your body is your home. It's your home. It is your home. You can be brain dead and your body can still be alive. Oh my God, really? The body is um, freaking amazing. It's not just an amazing miraculous machine and complex systems of functioning. And the only time we notice our body is when things aren't working quite right. Maybe if we would be in our bodies, be home a little more often and take care of the family of our body and all of the needs that our body has and the gentle, simple asks for a healthy breakfast or a little more water or a little bit of movement or maybe some quiet time, some good sleep. It's not, it's not hard to give our body what it needs. It's not, it's not. So why do we withhold that? Why do we ignore that? Do we really think it's not important? Do you really think your body is not important? Until that moment you get a critical diagnosis or you're in a horrible accident or you're at a stage of your life where you can't do the things you used to do. Even if you're a runner and you love to run and now you can't run so much anymore because, you know, the knees and the meniscus and the kneecap is (laughs) torn. I didn't love to run, but I do have a meniscus (laughs) issue, which I'm gently taking care of right now. But we overuse, and then we just expect it to just be there, be there, be there, go, 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 do, 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 and it it just can't do that. We've got to be with our bodies. We've got to be with. If you can't be in it, be with it. And I know the next questions are going to be, well, how do I get in my body? Like you practice, you visit, you have visits. I'll have to do some meditations Mm -hmm. to help help with this. I talk about this in private session with people that are very clearly not connected to their body. And I'm not trying to blame you for not being in your body because believe me, I spent a huge chunk, probably, oh my gosh, you guys, probably a good 10, maybe even 12 years doing spiritual work, doing psychic work as a psychic and not wanting to be in my body. And I knew it. I knew I didn't want to be in my body. 
not because I have trauma related to the body, not because I have um, abuse related to the body, but simply just quite frankly, because it just didn't feel as comfortable. Like I just wanted to get, get away from the stress. My body is like a pop bottle. I have a lot of um, uh, 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 internal, my, my patterns in the past have been to internalize my stress. And so anxiety, um, uh, anxiety probably is the best way to describe it. I mean, I know everybody has that and can relate to it, but it's, it's really gets so uncomfortable that I just have to like leave my body. And when I did spiritual and psychic work, like clearing work and even paranormal stuff early on, I don't do that now. Do not ask me to work with paranormal stuff like ghosts or whatever. I mean, I can give people information and stuff if it's like a super dire situation. I'm not the person that's going to go and do that anymore. There's no way. It's just not my, I don't enjoy it. Okay, that's why. And it's hard. And ain't nobody going to pay you the money that it's worth to do it. Let me just be clear and honest. It's, it's hard work. So, <clears throat> I know what this is like to not be in your body. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's better to be in it. I feel so much more whole connected when you feel disconnected like something's missing it's because you are your soul is not in your body fully and I'm I'm like you just got to practice being in a little bit meditation can do that being out in nature can do that breathing just breathing into your body and feeling your chest fill with air and literally feeling your lungs expand it can help you know for sure so for me it was more of an emotional overwhelming energy that caused me to leave my body or to feel like I'm safer out of my body than in my body because inside my body I just felt oh my god shaky inside I just didn't feel it's like how can I trust my body if when I come in after a while I start to feel bad like negative about myself or like I can't handle my emotions what's going on I just feel bad I feel like everything's bad the world is negative I can't do anything about it so what's going on that's really empath and being an empath I think for empaths it's really hard to be in your body constantly so I understand that it could be hard and that you might not even really understand this concept of being in your body or being out of your body but I feel like if you really felt into your heart space you know exactly what I'm talking about the separation the disconnection that you feel is because you're not you're not you're really not giving yourself that chance to be with yourself I mean you are actually at your core a really great energy you are a great spiritual being and as a person to have that kind of greatness connected to you can be kind of like what that's not me really what you know It can be a little bit hard to believe, but it's just the fact. It's just a fact. It's just true. And if we can go to that part of us and let that just be inside of us, like in your physical body, just let your body be the home for that, for your spirit. Just let it be the house for your spirit. Let it be the Airbnb for this lifetime. (laughs) A really great one with an awesome view, super great amenities, and a awesome pool okay (laughs) (sighs) yes yes being in your body take a nice deep breath in full exhale out It's a relationship. The relationship you have with your human experience is equally as important as the relationship with you have that you have with your spiritual experience. These are not two separate things. The goal is to allow them to be integrated in relationship. Sometimes one is leading and the other is not leading. Then they switch roles sometimes, but they are always together. 
there's always opportunity to work together, to weave them together, to collaborate together. There is always opportunity for unity in the body and with the spirit, living in, safe in the body. In order to achieve this, of course, we have to be aware and recognize our empath energies, our clairsentient heart, our sensitive heart space, and our emotions, and work with the ways that our body doesn't always feel so great because we are over-processing energy, we are internalizing energy. But don't make the mistake of believing that the internalization of energy is the same thing as having your spirit be in your body. It's not the same thing. It's not. It's a pattern of processing and working with energy. That's all that is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's all that is. No big deal. We could talk about this for hours and days and weeks and months and years. But that's all that is. Today, we're focused on being in your body. You're not stuck in your body. Your spirit needs a home, it needs a home base, it needs a beautiful place to set up shop and create its studio. It's not a one or the other, it's a this and this, the body and the spirit. So when I work with clients, you've heard me say this before, if you listen to my fairy grasshopper YouTube channel, I work with a very simple model of four parts of ourselves, body and mind, heart and soul. And I feel like there's alliances here. The BFFs are the body and the mind, and the other two BFFs are the heart and the soul. Interestingly, the heart and the soul are at the core of the physical body. Oh, yes, we have a lot of energetic power within us. For sure we do. If we are in, <laughs> in the entire beautiful sacred container of the body, the body is the container, it's the vessel, the vehicle. Without that, um, you got nothing. You got nothing. Okay, nothing. Nothing. No thing. No body, no thing, no nothing. And I promise you, when you're out the body, you're going to miss the body for a bit. You're going to feel, oh, I'm spirit. Oh, I don't have to be in a body anymore. Yay. And then, then two seconds later, you're going to be like, dang, the body. It was so awesome and so sensory and so beautiful. And I could experience the world and the nature and the, and the gravity of the, the body and the, just the amazing things that are only capable when you are in a body. But you're not going to know that until you're not in the body. You're going to have to feel into the beauty of this sacred container. It's a house. It's not contain. It's not a cage. The body is not a cage. It's a container, sacred container, sacred, sacred house. It's a house with a solid foundation. And the body is very intuitive and in tune, and it can also work with the brain. So the body could be the key to everything to all the disconnection you're feeling because it can work with the mind, the body can, and it can work with the spirit and energy and it can work with the heart and the feeling and the emotion. So much can be achieved and accomplished if we just harness the body as a house, a sacred house. I'm not talking about your physicality. I'm talking about like, like, you know, like what you can do, like an Olympian or a yoga master. I'm not talking about that. <clears throat> or how young you look or whatever. <laughs> I'm talking about the body as this beautiful, miraculous gift. This palace. It is a palace. Ah. <sighs> So can we just start there <laughs> with the palace? Maybe in your journal, write a bit about your body and your relationship to your body. And even if it's been this, this tumultuous, not very kind relationship, or if it's been a great relationship, I mean, write it, maybe write about that. Start with where you're at, you know, get some perspective there. And then ask your spirit how it can help to be embodied, what it can do for the body. And ask the body what the body needs. What can the spirit do for the body to be embodied? And what does the body need? 
in order to do that. I just heard out loud, trust. For me, that's a key factor, trust. And that's what it took for me to get to that point. I can share with you that experience at some point, how I knew I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in my body. I'm finally in my body. I set it as an intention and I really worked for a couple, like three years, I'd say, until I really felt it, two and a half, probably three years. Worked by working, I mean, through awareness, through honoring the relationship of the energies, through honoring my physical body. Mm -hmm. And I want, I want that for you. You deserve that. <clears throat> you deserve to be at your full power, body, mind, heart, and soul. Full power, unity, unified, working together. It's not perfect. It's about alignment and connection. Working together. All right. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for listening to this Sunday morning coffee episode with Bridget. Lots of, lots of gems of wisdom in this one. Lots of conversation here. I'll be curious to read your comments to see what has stood out for you in this particular episode of the podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss an episode of the podcast or the weekly channeling videos here. If you're looking for me and want more insight or want to binge worthy content, go ahead and check out Fairy Grasshopper. That's Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube, my intuitive and vlogging channel. You can find me on social media on Instagram and Facebook at Bridget Inspired.